Hi everyone, uh, welcome to class. So today I'm gonna start uh, with an introduction to PyTorch. So I have this notebook here, which you can find in my uh, GitHub repo. Um, so this is the address of the GitHub repo uh, under notebooks, but also I will post that in our Slack channel later today. So, um, so what is PyTorch? You know, we have been talking about PyTorch a little bit, but let me let me tell you what PyTorch is. So PyTorch is basically a, like a NumPy, but uh, you can use uh, your GPU with PyTorch, which will accelerate your computation, so everything will be faster. PyTorch also has um, a, four packages that are very useful. One is this like package like NumPy, like to have uh, in this case we call it tensors. Um, and so the, we call um, yeah, basically PyTorch tensors. And then we have a package called uh, Autograd, which is a package that automatically will compute gradients. That becomes pretty handy when you're doing gradient descent, because if you remember, when we're doing gradient descent, we want to compute the, the gradient, with basically the derivative with the PERT to all the parameters in the model of the loss function. So again, we want to compute the derivative with respect to all the parameters of our loss function, right? And those gradients are computed automatically using PyTorch. So you don't have to compute that by hand, which is pretty handy. Also, uh, PyTorch has a library of layers and other functions that uh, are useful, like cost functions and things like that. And finally, also PyTorch has a package for optimizing um, functions like grain descent or different or other uh, optimization type functions. Okay, so what I'm going to do today, I am going to give you a little bit of an overview of PyTorch with a couple of simple examples. Uh, and then in the next part of the lecture, I will give you a more sophisticated version of uh, of a, an example for PyTorch, okay? So, um, so how can we create PyTorch tensors? So there are a few different ways. Uh, one of them is just from, a, from list or NumPy arrays or things like that. So we can just like um, a wrap around torch.tensor and that will give us a tensor. So like in this case, uh, we can also create um, just kind of random tensors as well. And this would be a, a way of doing that. So X dot shape is basically the shape of your tensor. Uh, so that's kind of a useful function. And then, uh, so in this case, I am creating a, a random tensor that is gonna be uh, a five comma 10 a, of type float. And this is the tensor itself. Um, there are different ways of reshaping um, tensors in, in PyTorch. And one of them is view. Um, so view will reshape your tensor in a similar way that you can reshape tensors in, in NumPy. And min minus one is it, kind of handy because when you put a minus one, it makes Torch infer the second dimension, basically. So in this case, I don't have to specify uh, what what this the second dimension should be. It will, it will just like infer the dimension, okay? So, you know, I'm gonna give you some other links if you want to follow a more detailed uh, kind of basic PyTorch tutorial later on, but these are kind of some of the ways in which we create tensors in PyTorch. So the second thing I want you guys to understand is this uh, automatic differentiation in PyTorch, this autograd package. So let me show you a couple of examples of how this works, right? So, so we have a tensor and um, basically when you basically tell a tensor require grad equal true, you're basically saying that in the future, if you have a scalar that depends on this tensor, you can differentiate with respect to this tensor X. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll let you, I'll show you an example, okay? So notice that uh, when I do x dot grad, this is the gradient. Right now it's empty because it's a tensor that I just created. It doesn't have a gradient, okay? So, but then I create um, some, let me actually make it, make this simpler like this. 
so let me create a scalar L. So in this case, L, uh, so what is L? So let me, let me do it line by line. So if I do two times X, why do I get, sorry, let me actually delete that. So if I get two times X, I just get a tensor that is two times X, right? If I sum plus one, what do I get? So I get another tensor, right? But then if I take all of these and sum it, I'd get a scalar, okay? So since I have a scalar, I can now compute the derivative of the scalar L with respect to my tensor X, okay? So how do I do that? So the way to do that is to do L dot backwards. And when I do L dot backwards, I can, I can populate the gradient of X. The gradient of X is basically the gradient of L with respect to X. Okay, so gradient of X is going to have the same dimensions as X, right? Because that's, that's what it is, is DL DX, okay? So now, guys, let's actually play with this function here. For example, if I put here uh, a 2, so I am getting my tensor X to the power of 2. So actually, let me, let me do that again. So I do X, this will... This will make everything go to the power of 2, okay? Then I say I multiply by 2, okay? Then I maybe I sum 1, and all of that just gives me a vector, right? A tensor in this case. And then finally, I want to sum all of that, um, and I'll get a scalar. Now, what do you guys think about if I do now, actually, give me, give me one sec. Uh, if I do now L dot backward, what do I get? Pause the video and try to think about it for a second. Yeah, so basically, if you guys think about how to differentiate this um, function L, which is like 2 times x plus you know, power of 2 plus 1, we have to take the derivative of every element of xi with respect to L. And that would be 2 times x, no, sorry, it's like 4 times x, okay? And this is exactly what we have here, the gradient to be, okay? So let's look at another example. So now in this case, I have, uh, so my tensor is um, it's a little bit more complicated. It has a shape two by three, okay? And I'm gonna do something pretty similar. I am going to take a power of two and then sum, okay? Um, and this is basically what I get. Notice that the gradient has the same shape as the original uh, tensor, okay? Cool, I hope that you play with this function to understand better what's going on because it's actually important to understand it. Okay, so let's talk about um, some elements of this uh, torch.nn module. So this is a module uh, that has a lot of um, type of neural network type of library that has different layers and, and different cost functions. And today we're just gonna talk about very simple stuff like a linear layer. Uh, so what is a linear layer? Um, so a linear layer is just a linear transformation of some input vector, okay? So the way to think about it is that, a, so if I have this nn linear 5,3, uh, it creates a transformation a times x plus b um, that converts any matrix uh, of type n times 5 into a matrix of type n times 3. And n could be anything. N is just kind of the number of observations that you have in your in your data, for example, right? So, um, so basically, this is just a linear transformation. And uh, the way we think about this, in the same way that uh, in in linear regression, is that we have some parameters. The parameters would be the matrix A, 
and the vector B. Okay, so those are the things that we are going to try to optimize with our uh, code, basically. Okay, so if you wanted to, so all of these uh, parameters get uh, initialized randomly. So if you wanted to look at the actual parameters, you can uh, basically create a list that says P for P in linear map to parameters, and that will give you, that will print all the parameters for you. And these are the parameters that you have. Um, you can understand a little bit more about this by um, also looking at the shapes of these parameters and realizing that uh, the shapes kind of make sense for the linear map that we are trying to construct. Okay, so, so now what I want to do is first I am going to uh, kind of write a linear regression uh, pipeline in Python and then I'm going to translate that to PyTorch. So I'm going to write it in Python for us to refresh what are the pieces uh, that we need, right? And then I'm going to write it in PyTorch to, for you to see how simple it is. But more powerfully, um, very complicated models are going to have a very similar pipeline. So basically right now I'm just going to show you how to do this with a very, very simple model of a linear regression. But then uh, this is going to show you how to do um, how to use PyTorch in general, okay, to fit models. So, um, so basically, let me let me show you a, let me show you a few functions that I need here. So, I I have a function that basically is going to create uh, some fake data for me. So, I am generating some random random numbers and then I am creating a linear function and adding some noise basically that's what I'm doing so let me show you uh, a visualization on how my data looks like right so I'm gonna feed this data in with some particular numbers in this case this uh, we have if we have basically a, our data is generated by this formula here a times x plus b where a is going to be 3 and b is going to be 8. Okay, so I'm going to generate some data with a, a equal 3 and b equal 8. I'm going to put some noise on it just to make it a tiny bit more difficult to the algorithm to figure out. But then I am going to try to recover that 3 and 8 that I used to create my data. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so, so let's do that. So I created my data. And um, I also need to create a couple of other functions. One of these is MSE, uh, mean square error. Um, you know, this is how, you know, how you would um, make a prediction. This y hat basically here is a prediction uh, for a equal 10 and b equal 5 for a particular vector x, right? And then you call MSC and you get an error, right? So also I have this, this thing I call MSC loss, which is basically just calling MSC on, on, the, on the predictions that we have for a particular A and B, okay? So basically, hopefully this is kind of clear for, for you guys, okay? So, um, so let me... Let me basically show you how I uh, will do something like this in Python. So first of all, what I would do is that I have two parameters, A and B, and I will initialize this parameter with random numbers, right? And also, uh, since I'm going to be using PyTorch a little bit, uh, you know, also here, I will, uh, I will do require grad equal true to A and to B, okay? So, um, so basically, uh, yeah, well, I am using Python and PyTorch at the same time, because in some ways I'm also using PyTorch because I'm going to, I'm going to call loss dot backwards to compute the idiotic. So in that sense, I'm using PyTorch, but then I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do this in a more general way, uh, next. Okay. 
So, uh, so basically, this is my training loop. So I start with a learning rate of um, 10 to the minus 3. And um, so I, ha I go through some um, iterations. OK, first, I had some fake data right here uh, created X and Y. OK, um, I compute, I, I start with some A and B that are random, remember, and I compute the loss for those particulars A and B. OK, then I do loss to backwards and that will compute the derivative of the loss with respect to A and to B. OK, remember, the loss is a, is a number. Right? So once you have a data set and some parameters, the loss is a function, it's a number uh, that is the average loss over all of the observations. Right? So I can compute d loss dA and d loss dB. Those are my gradients. Right? And what is the gradient descent uh, update? So it would be, um, I will have to update a dot data. That's basically the data part of the tensor A uh, by subtracting the learning rate times A dot grad dot data. OK. Uh, OK, so basically this is the update that you will do in gradient descent to change A and B. And also this is some something that is tricky about PyTorch. So if you don't put the gradients of A and B to zero, the gradients will accumulate. So it, when you keep doing loss top backwards, the gradients will keep accumulating. So if you don't want that to happen, like in this case, we don't want that to happen, we have to put the gradients to zero. OK, so I run this. And then I print the for a few iterations, and then I print the values of my uh, parameters A and B. And you know, it's not great. We get 3.3 .3 and you know, 7.8. So it's not three or eight, but it's getting there. So maybe if we run it for, for longer, it will get there. But before doing that, I'm gonna show you how to simplify this loop, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is that we are going to define a model. So, so instead of kind of by hand doing all of this, we're going to define a model. And our model is very simple. Our model just have one linear layer that has an input of dimension one and an output of dimension one. Why input of dimension one? Because our X, the one that we generated, has dimension one. Okay, why the output of dimension one? Because our Y also have dimension one. So basically we have this linear layer and if we want to make a, a model in PyTorch, there are two particular there are two ways to make a model in PyTorch. One is uh, it's very simple. You wrap uh, what you call your model around something called NN sequential. So if your model was very it was a lot more complicated, it had multiple layers, you will put all of your layers inside NN sequential. In our case, our model is very simple and it just have one layer. So we put just one layer inside that. So that will, and then we can print our model. So this is our model here, uh, right here. So this is one way to do that. There is another way to do that, which is to create a class. And that class is a subclass of nn.module. And that class has, has two functions that we have to create. One is the init. And in the init, what we do is that we initialize all of the layers that we have. So that's when you call the init is when all of the parameters become kind of random and you initialize all the parameters that you need, OK? And on the forward, the forward is basically what does a model does with X? So what are the steps that the model takes when I give it some input X? OK, so that's the second the second model. So um, I often use the second model because some uh, because the second API, because some of my models are complicated. Um, you can get away with using the first API for a long time before having to touch a second API. But you're going to see that I'm going to go back and forth between using one or using the other, and it's useful to understand both of them. OK. So if you want to understand the parameters of your model, you can still do p for p in model the parameters, and you will understand that you know we basically have two numbers here. So let's, uh, let's build our more PyTorch style loop. 
So first we create some data, okay? And the shape of my data right now is just like 10,000 because I have just like one feature for every observation. What happens is that um, a linear layer needs a two-dimensional data because often you're gonna have more than one dimension in your observations, right? So we have to use some way to tell them all that we need two-dimensional data. So what I'm doing right, right here is to do something, to use something called and squeeze is a function that is just gonna go and add another dimension to the data, okay? You can also use view, it's just and squeeze will, it's kind of more general, uh, will we'll take any, uh, any vector x and just add a, a dimension anywhere you want. So it's, it's kind of a handy function to have. Okay, so now I can apply my model to my data and I get some y hat. Y hat is my um, prediction, the prediction I have. And my model at the beginning is random, remember? So, so this, these numbers are kind of random, right? And then, uh, basically, if we look at the shape of y hat, let me actually look at the shape of y hat. The shape of y hat is 10,000 comma one. And the shape of my y, my actual target, is just 10,000. So to be able to compute a loss between y hat and y, they also have to have the same dimensions. So what I do is that I will basically do the same thing. I will unsqueeze y to add a dimension there to be able to compute a loss between y and y hat, okay? So in this case, I am using f.msc loss, which is a function in PyTorch to compute my loss. So, and this is what I get, okay? So, so guys, I am also, let me now show you basically my loop in PyTorch. So uh, I'm adding some validation data, some other random data. Um, I am, I'm adding validation data just to show you how I use PyTorch normally, even if the data is random, you know? Um, so uh, instead of doing my, um, instead of by hand doing grain descent, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an, a, an optimizer. So it's a function that is going to, on an object that is going to do the grain descent for me. And instead of using just grain descent, I am gonna use a version of grain descent called Adam W, which is a lot better than grain descent. There's also one called Adam, and that one is good too, okay? So what do you need to get this optimizer? So uh, you need to basically call torch.optim.adamw, in this case, uh, you have to give the optimizer, who are your parameters? So model the parameters will tell the optimizer, this is a, this is the thing I want you to optimize, right? And then you have to give them a learning rate, okay? So, and then in my for in my loop, basically what I do is that, first of all, I tell my model that it's gonna be in training mode. Uh, there are two modes, it's the training mode and the eval mode. Um, there are some layers uh, in some machine learning models that behave differently when you are training and when you're evaluating. So you always have to specify if you are training or evaluating, okay? And since I am going to also evaluate in this loop, I have to put model.train at every uh, epoch, okay? So, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned before what an epoch is. An epoch is when you are passing your model, like training your model through your whole data set. Okay. So in here, uh, we are running a, this a loop through 10,000 epochs. So we are putting all the data into the, um, to feed the model 10,000 times. Okay. So Yeah, so basically we do model.train, then uh, we predict on 
basically get our y hat on x, so the prediction that we had for observations x, x is all our data or our observations. Uh, then we compute a loss, which we do it uh, using f dot msc loss. Then uh, we uh, use the optimizer to make all our gradients to be zero. These are the gradients with respect to all of the parameters of this model. Okay. Then we do loss talk backwards to be able to compute the gradients with respect to the parameters of this model. So the, the gradients of the loss with respect to all the parameters of the model. And then instead of like doing gradient descent directly, you call optimizer.step to actually do gradient descent. And you know, this part here is kind of optional in some ways, but since you're gonna do this in all of your um, models, you're gonna use validation to understand how the model is doing on data outside of your training set, then I also added that in here. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the model in the evaluation mode and I'm going to, you know, uh, evaluate the model on that data. Uh, I'm going to compute the validation loss. And, you know, from time to time, I'm going to print uh, my validation loss and my training loss, both of them, because it's, it's useful. So this uh, loss or item is going to take a, a tensor into a number. And so it's useful to, to do that. So let me uh, let me basically uh, kind of print that. Uh, okay, cool. And let me look at the values of these parameters. Notice that uh, the values are much closer to the real values that we uh, used to generate the data. So um, A is very close to three, and B is very close to eight, and that is because. Adam W is a much better algorithm than just like pure rain the same. Okay. So, um, okay. So let me show you how you would do this for logistic regression. So let's see what would change for logistic regression. So I am also generating some fake data here. So let me show you how my fake data looks like. So. Now I have two dimensional data. So I have X1 and X2, and the labels are these, uh, so the, the blue and the yellow labels. So one is zero and the other one is one. Okay, so, so basically I, the first thing I do, I generate my data uh, with uh, NumPy, and then I take my data, uh, convert it into tensors, uh, I make a model now and notice that my model, what's the difference between my previous model and this model? So the main difference is that I have two features. So my model has to take two variables. So you put two comma one. So this is just a linear layer. So, um, yeah, so notice again, this is the shape of my output here because I'm just using a hundred numbers. Um, now uh, I am going to generate a lot of more data for my loop, so I'm going to generate 10,000 points for uh, my training and 1,000 points for my validation. And the labels are 0 and 1s, as I showed you before, right? So I am using, let's actually use Adam W here. So. Um, I am using a learning rate of 0 0.1 and I am uh, using my model the parameters. Remember I defined my model right here using the sequential API. And uh, some of you may be thinking, hey Janet, there is a sigmoid after the linear operation in, in um, logistic regression and you will be totally right. Uh, so I am going to use the sigmoid. I can I can add the sigmoid to the model itself, or I can add it in the training loop. And I'm gonna be adding that in the training loop. Okay, I'm just gonna show you how to do that. So basically, I I would do the same thing I did before. The only thing that is gonna change is my loss function. 
So the model is actually pretty similar and everything is gonna be pretty similar. The only thing is that instead of using uh, MSC laws, I am gonna use binary cross entropy. Okay, so that's kind of the only difference. So I have this loss, binary cross entropy. I am using my Y hat and I am using sigmoid inside that. So I'm computing the loss with respect to, to, to Y and everything else is the same, except that I'm using a cross entropy, binary cross entropy loss, okay? There is also, you're gonna see this in many of my notebooks later, that there is a function that will combine sigmoid and binary cross entropy loss and it's called binary cross entropy will dodge it and I often instead of using torch to sigmoid and binary cross entropy I will use this other loss function that combine the two so you may, you will see me doing that okay so okay so let's just train this model and notice here that I am um, printing the training laws and the validation laws, and it's just getting very small. And hopefully these numbers kind of match the, the numbers on top. I have a little problem for you to do, which is, could you try to compute accuracy inside this loop? Training accuracy or validation accuracy, or both, you know? Can you try to think about how would you computer accuracy inside this loop. That would be a useful um, exercise for you guys to do. Okay, so let me just tell you kind of a couple of random things that it would be useful for you to know. For example, suppose that you have, um, you have a tensor. How would you take a tensor back to NumPy? Suppose that that's kind of something useful to you. Then you do x dot NumPy and you get a NumPy array. Actually, I, this is kind of all I have for right now. And remember my exercise, that will actually help you a lot to get used to PyTorch. And also, uh, if you want more basic introduction to PyTorch, PyTorch has a lot of tutorials. So you can go to this link here and uh, just kind of look a lot more into PyTorch. Let me sell you PyTorch a little bit more. So PyTorch, is so there are two main libraries for doing deep learning there is pytorch and there is tensorflow and both the pytorch and tensorflow are used in industry right now very much so it's very useful for you to learn well at least one of them and once you learn one you you actually it's kind of easy how to learn the other one because they have been converging to each other so PyTorch, I think, is much easier to use. It's much nicer to use. Uh, TensorFlow is more complicated, but TensorFlow has been simplifying everything to mimic PyTorch pretty much. So and PyTorch has been developed by Facebook and TensorFlow has been developed by Google. So both of them have a lot of uh, people backing them up. So anyways, this is actually pretty important and it may be useful for your interviews. Okay, well, talk to you in the next video.